Of course I'm muted. Of course the very- This is why captions are on. This is why captions are on. Boom. This is why captions are on. Hello, let me start over. Hi. My name is Lainey Love. Welcome to my channel. If you are coming in from Christmas community or you are coming because you saw the tweet or what have you. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the love boat where it's always Christmas apparently because I'm too lazy to take down my tree. So welcome. <laughs> um, I wanted to kind of just introduce what cabin chats are. So for those that are here for the first time, um, I am the Capitan of the love boat, okay? So I run this ship, okay? And whenever I play with my community or I play with um, other people, my voice chat is called my cabin, Lainey's cabin. So welcome to my cabin where we're just gonna like chat. So cabin chat, so kept it simple. Hello Omega, how you doing? But hello everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, but I am so excited to start this. Um, this is a monthly podcast that I want to do. Just bring on some awesome, awesome content creators and just kind of have a conversation out in the open. Because I know like you see like Twitter thuds and we have Twitter, like, like Twitter spaces and, you know, and things like that. Or just conversations that we have amongst ourselves as content creators. But I feel like our viewers don't really get the chance to get in on that conversation or people are too afraid to ask questions about content creation and what, you know, they can do and how they can get into it if they're interested. So here we are. Um, uh, no question is a dumb question. If you have a question, I'm gonna ask that you submit them through the channel points, okay? I took away all the extra redemptions. We're only focusing on things you can do today, okay? Um, so I'm gonna highly encourage you to use that just because it's easier for me to keep track of you. Um, in terms of your question, it doesn't get lost in chat. It's in an orderly queue and we can refer to it as we need to. Okay. Um, other ground rules, don't be a dick, you know, respect everybody. If you can agree to disagree, we're all just here to have a good time. Okay. That's about it. That's about it. Um, so before we bring Chris on, I do want to kind of talk about Chris and why I chose Chris to be my, my first guest. And aside from us being both Tauruses, and <laughs> aside from he and I being both Tauruses, and him being the timeline terror, if you follow Chris on Twitter, you already know what I'm talking about. Um, but Chris is such a genuine human and such a chill person and very informative, has no issue. We don't do gatekeeping here. Chris is a big proponent of what is gatekeeping, don't know her, we don't do that. And so I thought to to launch this, what better way than to have somebody like that, that has that amazing energy to bring to the table. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm just super proud of him and his journey of um, his own content creation and how far he has come. And Chris is out here doing a damn thing. Um, right, exactly, I agree. Perfect choice, perfect choice. Um, so as you can see down here, we have captions. When Chris and I come on camera, they're gonna be even a larger section for ca uh, captions. And then I have chat on this side too. So if you are a full screener and you're not a really, you're, if you're a lurker and you don't really engage in chat, this is like kind of the perfect setup for you. Um, so yeah, so I hope you all enjoy today. Uh, you all vibe. I feel like I should um, introduce myself because I feel like a lot of people probably don't know who I am. Um, my name is Lainey Love. I have been streaming on Twitch. This has been my fourth year uh, on Twitch uh, streaming. I primarily stream Dead by Daylight, but I do stream games occasionally like um, Minecraft, Fortnite. Right now we're I'm um, playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm actually gonna finish that tomorrow. I'm determined to finish that tomorrow on stream. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and I found in my time doing content creation and being a content creator that it's important to share the knowledge that you have. Um, and I feel like when you gatekeep and you don't share, that is unfortunate ex extremely unfortunate and it just sucks it just sucks I feel like you know you never want 
to feel like you're drowning. Okay. You never want to, I think it's so selfish when you see somebody that's like drowning and you just refuse to help them, you know, unless they're like a, you know, racist, homophobe, transphobe, misogynist, we can leave, we can leave them hanging. <laughs> um, otherwise, if you know, if it's somebody that genuinely is like looking for insight and help, you know, something as simple as, oh, how did you get your captions like that? Where do you use your captions? Um, you know, how did you, what kind of camera do you use? Some people are very particular about the gatekeeping that they'll do regarding that. And I don't get it. We all, if you are a content creator or any kind of streamer or any kind of person who does content on the internet, we all started from the same place. So it's important for us to give back. Period. 100% and I have others to tell you exactly. So I kind of want what this to be about, you know, once a month um, to share with another content creator, just kind of talk about, you know, the industry, um, how we got here, and answer any questions y'all have. Seriously. Feel free. You can start racking up the questions now if you want to. Um, you can redeem a question, uh, exclamation point Q&A to be able to ask questions, whether it's about us, um, about our journeys, um, how does somebody get started in content creation? We're gonna kind of hit a lot of different topics, not, you know, also including like parasocial relationships, boundaries, um, how do you set those? Why is it important you set those? Um, and I think it's also good to have these conversations with people who don't stream and um, people who, who are strictly on the viewer end because the pressure to create content sucks. <laughs> it sucks. The, the, the feeling like, you know, if you post something, is anybody going to support it? And kind of coming to the grips and conclusions of, I mean, whether they do or they don't, why are we really doing it? You know? So I am just so excited. I'm so excited for today. I, I can't even... I can't even express how excited I am. I'm so, so excited. But I hope everybody's doing well. Happy Friday to you. You're nervous? Why are you nervous? You're lucky I don't have my other overlay. I <laughs> get so close. Why are you nervous? No need to be nervous. I don't bite. It's okay. <laughs> um, Cast what you're using, but multiple. Oh, yeah. I am using bada bing bada boom. I use Pixel Chat. So I love Pixel Chat. So you can make an account with Pixel Chat and then send an invite link to multiple people. Yeah. You are very welcome. Um, I try, I've been trying to be more accessible um, with my content, hence why I have the captions on screen for this. Also, Mike, I saw you earlier. Key to layout, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I did it in. The middle of the night. <laughs> but it's okay. It is okay. Um, but yeah, I am so excited. I'm so excited to have this conversation. I hope you all take a, a lot from the conversation. Um, oh, of course, of course. Um, I found out about this chat box recently. So, boom. If you want to use the... The ones over here with your pronouns in the chat box, that is what I use. Um, but yeah, I am so excited to start this conversation. I am ecstatic. I am excited. So excited. I hope all of you are doing well. We're talking about, we're talking about content creation today. You're talking about content creation. Chris is, you know, de-stressed. Chris has been streaming since like 11.30 <laughs> Eastern. So Chris is like grabbing water and chilling. So when Chris is ready, we'll bring Chris in. And we'll get her going. Super excited. Did I not put a space for you to ask the freaking question? Hold on. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let me fix that. One second. 
One second. I will fix that so you can actually put your question in there. How about that? How about that? Do, 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 do. There we go. Boom. There we go. So that should be fixed now. Okay. Hi, Mackenzie. Hello. Chris Contango. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, guys, I'm going to refund. I'm going to refund that so you can resubmit your question <laughs> for the piping hot tea. Absolutely. 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 Do 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 do. All right. Bada boom boom. Every time I see this dude's Twitter, it's something hilarious. Absolutely. If you're not following Chris on Twitter, what are you doing here? Go follow Chris on all his socials right now. Right now. Right now. Go, go, go. Go follow right now. Lord, she's crossing. Okay, hold on. One second. Here. Chris, I'm gonna give you mod perms. <laughs> you, ha you have the ability to see everything now. Nothing should restrict you now. <laughs> okay, try now. Still no? Nani? Why? You should be able to. That's so strange. Hold on, my Discord hates Chris. Ah! Now do it. Now do it. Bam! Bam! I knew it. I knew it. All right, we are bringing in the legend himself. Let me turn off my camera for a sec. Not just say turn phone. off the I camera when I switch over. Terrible. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> After all the fighting. After all the fighting that I did to get you here. Hello, sir. Fighting? There was no fighting. I literally said yes instantly. <laughs> no, fighting in terms of my Discord. My Discord didn't like oh. you. Uh uh, not here comes the boy. There he is. Hello, <laughs> boy. He is. Hello. No boy. cameras. This man is a star. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, no, no flash photography, please. No, no, just. Yes, yes. The blinding lights from the cameras. The sweater and the couch got me thinking Chris is my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Trey, well, Trey, how does that make you feel? The irony of me be the actual therapist. The irony, I was, I was just going to say that. And then he's probably like, nobody fucking says that. No, the, no, the gag is, if you want to say that, that's fine. Uh, send me the money. Pay me. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Oh my goodness. Lady, thank you for having me. This is such an honor to to to, to hang out. The and to, honor to be is mine. On the stream. Oh my goodness. Me. <laughs> oh, we got our first question. Look at that. Oh, damn. So before we before we get to that, before we get to that, though, I want you to tell the people about yourself, sir. Tell us how you, you oh. got started on this beautiful journey that is content creation. How I got started in content creation, boredom, little old ass <laughs> boredom. Well, before I went to university also, can I swear? Is that okay? Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, before I went to university, I went back to my high school for like a semester. So I'm taking y'all way, way, way back. This is at least almost a decade ago. Because um, like many people at 18, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I applied to, I believe, like 11 different schools, colleges and universities from everything wow. from English literature to, to police foundations, because everyone's like, just do something. 
Um, and I'm like, yeah, I'll be a cop. Sure. Um, oh. <laughs> and then kind of have that moment where you're like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. So I just went back to my high school for a semester and took some like grade 12 courses I'd never taken. So I took like philosophy and just different things. Um, mm -hmm. And then I only did one semester. So I had nine months between when I went to university and got accepted. Um, so I had time to kill. So then I was kind of just like, what if I just like started like writing a blog or like making a YouTube channel or things like that just to kind of like see and just try new things and then I kind of took it from there and then um I kind of fell off of it I wouldn't say I fell off but I think it served its purpose when I was in university in that format mm -hmm. and then when I graduated I kind of didn't care to do YouTube things anymore mm. um but more recently um with Twitch um in 2020 I had a MacBook that was just given me pain forever since the day i got it that thing was not trying to work properly but in 2020 i noticed it was giving so i was like i mean it was not it wasn't giving anything it was like it was just giving out um but <laughs> <laughs> but um i was like you know what i've always wanted to build a computer anyways so why why mm -hmm. not look it up see what's going on and, and and try so i built a computer and at that point i already had streamed on my xbox and i was like oh that was kind of cool and it was so scuffed it was the worst th stream i've ever seen you can even hear me over this game <gasps> no! um but it was such a thrill i don't even think anybody went there except my girlfriend amanda i think that was the only people that were up in there um but it was such a thrill and i was so excited like i didn't expect a thousand people to show up but i was just super excited about that and i was like oh okay this is something really cool i would love to explore this a little bit further and that was essentially kind of how things went and how i kind of ended up on the twitch front because i'd watched twitch for years mm -hmm. um like my account was made in like 2016 and then uh i just kind of had just always been a viewer and now i was like well let's try streaming for, mm -hmm. for i guess i guess we'll try this and here we are now i say cursed shit on the internet <laughs> <laughs> this is true this is you do. Yes, you do. Um, I know for uh, for me, I, I kind of similar. Been a I made my uh, account back in 2015, oh, and wow. I uh, yeah, but I didn't use it until like 2017. That's when mm. I started like being like a viewer on Twitch. I just mainly followed over here for like followed mm. a YouTuber over here, and um, yeah, and then I was just in different communities, and I was. You know, I didn't have great experiences, and and I was like, well, shit. If, if these assholes <laughs> have a whole community of people that supports them, I'm gonna start streaming and actually make a legitimate community of people that actually exactly. care about each other and support each other, rather than you know, I you know, rule over all of you kind of mentality. Exactly. Which, God, that's terrible. Um, exactly. Exactly. So I. I've, I've appreciated not only growing in this space, but getting to know amazing creators like you in this space oh, who are just, uh, <laughs> I'm going to start and you're going to let me finish. But, um, you know, people who are genuine, because I, I feel like it's it's very hard to find that. Because um, some people have different. Motives. And yeah. Mm -hmm. ideas Mot <laughs> motives and reasons for why they do what they do yeah. but you know the, at the end of the day we're just people who turn on a camera and you know <laughs> stream on the internet but we're still exactly. the same people when we turn those cameras off you know and exactly. um so i i definitely want to take these monthly podcasts to show more of the genuine side because i feel like you, there's so much drama on Twitter and there there's so many people getting exposed left and right every day. So yes, it's very I mean. hard to to find the genuine anymore. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing. I feel like a lot of people um chase after drama and something that I always tell people when drama or things like that happen um is the internet doesn't care who's right or wrong or anything like that the internet doesn't have a conscience for these things they just want to see people drag through the mud. So yeah. if more and more people are being brought through something like people and general audiences on a level they might care but it's just the same thing as if we look back to the tabloids like when everything was happening with britney spears in like 2004 and whatnot mm -hmm. they didn't care even though people magazine was actively the ones that were literally wreaking havoc on her life they didn't care they just wanted to see the bloodbath and now it's like oh my gosh britney spears what happened and but so i always try and like 
just stay in my lane to an extent but then i always tell people i'm like look i just love playing video games i'm here to play video games and to have fun and to make this community and when shit starts getting a little bit you know more dramatic i'm mm -hmm. out yeah i'm out because this has nothing to do with me i am the epitome of minding my business like something happens i see it i mm -hmm. take a mental note and i do whatever i think that's exactly. some of the the harder parts with Twitter because things were so instant and you can just mm -hmm. type out what you feel at every second. And it's like, sometimes you're exactly. like, you don't, you, you don't have to say anything. Exactly. And sometimes you just, people like, you just need to start hitting that fucking backspace. Unfortunately, yep. that's the reality of what it is. You just need to start hitting that backspace or you need to just have it in your drafts and let it be where it be is. Cause not everything needs to be said about mm -hmm. everything. Um, but you know what? I can't tell anyone how to run their social media account. I can't tell anyone how to do anything. Um, but if y'all ever follow me expecting for me to weigh in on the latest on what's going on, it just won't happen. Mm -hmm. It's 90% of the times. I tell you, I told you, I said it on my stream today. I'm like, I may never say anything, but I'm perceiving. Oh, but yeah. I'm looking. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I'm looking. Yeah, I feel um, like people don't know how to, how to peep it's shit not my anymore. Job to be, exactly. It's not my job to look at a situation that doesn't involve me and start part of me i had the hiccups um to start dictating who's right and who's wrong or any of these things i'm not god so and mm -hmm. it's just no i'm not doing that i'm here to play video games and make awesome content and sh and stuff like that mm -hmm. and until it involves me it doesn't involve me <laughs> exactly just like is it messing up my money no um Ex exactly but when uh, it does involve me is it impacting me in any way no okay i'm, I'm, I'm a this about it this voice isn't calm no more when it does involve me <laughs> okay and that's mainly for my my sanity because i know that if i do get mad and i do pop off it's going down like <laughs> just, Ooh. just Ooh, don't listen, call me I'm me down get nobody mad i'm not trying to get nobody mad <laughs> up in here i've seen you rage playing some of these dead by daylight games yep. i'm not trying to get nobody i'm not especially laney i'm not trying to get nobody mad <laughs> in this twitch space period um, <laughs> right um we have our first question uh, from black Sick. goddess 47 have either of you as black content creators been discouraged from creating content or streaming because you're worried about taking shine from other black content creators um no no even though we know mm -hmm. that this stigma necessarily does exist um i don't believe that there can only be one sometimes this mm -hmm. happens in so many communities especially just involving black people that there can just be one black person that is i guess like at the top or one black person who's successful mm -hmm. and everyone else is just trying to aspire to get to that level of success and knock them off and that's just not the reality for anything whether you're black white asian or anything there is more than enough space for all of us to literally collectively be together mm -hmm. um doing our own things because if we think of how many people there are just on this planet there is over eight like over seven billion people i say i brought it mm -hmm. down to seven because i'm like eight i'm not too confident seven at least i know that um there's so much people on here to sort of think that in certain things there can be just one person mm -hmm. that's going to be the only person that can do this it's just not realistic of course there will always be um people and there will always be some people that that do things and have ulterior motives in the mm -hmm. background that try and undermine different people and stuff like that you really just have to take mental notes of that and just be and really just be selective with the people you keep around you and be real i don't think i've ever had that come up i don't think i've had that happen to me because people know that i'm not that type of person and mm -hmm. i don't carry that intention in my heart to mm -hmm. um want to do that to other people whether it's in real life whether it's as a creator or anything like that because i literally in my second month streaming on twitch we were fundraising i was fundraising with kita palooza and blizz for mm -hmm. and a number of other creators for black girls code because i want all of us to be able to shine and i love that so much um so i can't say that i've had that experience i'm thankful i mm -hmm. am sure that it might happen because of course we know that the content oh, creation yes. space is not kind to black people especially black women i'm not here to speak over anyone mm -hmm. who has that experience but oh uh oh you know what <laughs> when it happens there's only so much that i can do but it's not coming from me that i can say <laughs> mm -hmm. um and I, I see we have in this cosplay in chat. Um, she shared that she was a victim of that. Absolutely. And I, I'm and I so think sorry. the, mm -hmm. I think the thing is too is that 
I'm I'm of two two trains of thought here. Okay, mm-hmm. there's room for everybody, but you got to get that bag. Period. Mm-hmm. So you can't be upset with somebody because, like, let's say, for example, the the bullshit that happened with stream elements and the whole that when they chose like primarily partners for the diversity program and stuff and people were like losing mm-hmm. their mind and I'm, and I'm sitting here like that doesn't mean you'll never get the opportunity exactly well it does it just, now because now they've seen how okay exactly so they see <laughs> okay you better come through with that pt emo but like <laughs> but you know but it is what it is and, it, and i it blows my mind how people assume that if you're partnered that that means that you've done it You've you've accomplished exactly. your feat. You have no bills to pay. You automatically get paid. In fact, you get paid <laughs> much more than the rest of us, and that's not true. And that, and and, it's not true. Yeah, it's not true. Nothing changes when you get the check mark. Exactly. And I um, exactly. like, and people will stomp over. They'll screw people over to try to you know capitalize on clout and things like that. But it's like, but even if you get the numbers that you're hoping for. Who did, like how many bridges did you burn? Exactly. To and get that's the where thing because it's like the the internet is not big. People talk. No. Mm-hmm. People talk. Oh my goodness! So why do you want to burn a bunch of bridges? Because you never know who knows people. And it's not even at that point people trying to be bad mind or nothing to you or trying to block your blessings. But if people are just holding you accountable for how you treated them in a space mm-hmm. and warning others, what do you what do you want them to do? You tried to you really tried to take a shortcut to the top when you didn't have to especially when people have good intentions and want to support you on things and you undermine them i'm sorry if you fuck around and find out you Period. you will fuck around and find out and the internet for real yeah and um i think that kind of seg- segues uh kind of into well before we segue in there um we have one uh, another question uh, uh, from Mike Unofficial. As content creators putting things on the internet that anyone can see, do you feel that there is such a thing as intellectual property that should be exclusively yours, i.e. redemptions, catchphrases, and other content you feel you created? Um, That's loaded. That is a loaded question, but I, I like that question because it's a very... I do too. It's a very um, intricate question because, mm-hmm. for example, like... My, when somebody follows, I'm like, oh, hey, you know, welcome to the love boat. I'm your captain. Mm-hmm. Lainey, you said, da, 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 da. even if you take that word for word and you just change it around to whatever you come up with, it's still not genuine. Mm-hmm. Like, it's one thing if you look at the way somebody's overlay is set up. It's one thing if you look at the way that maybe somebody formats their rules or, you mm-hmm. know, something like that. In consecration, most of the stuff is going to get taken. Just accept it. Mm-hmm. Okay? But then there are blatant things like mascots being taken. Things like that. Things like that, to me, are intellectual property. Um, you know, all of my, my my two penguins for, you know, my... I came up with that. Nobody... I didn't look at anybody. Do, no. I came up with those babies. So if somebody literally says, oh, I want this too and they they have like little quirky things just like mine do it's kind of like what was the point like you you put exactly. no no thought into it no thought into it at all and people and can tell exactly <laughs> people can tell because the internet's like again the internet's not small so all it takes is one person from laney's community to go over to that other person's stream yep. and be like hold on i recognize i recognize these penguins from somewhere and connect mm-hmm. the dots and that's I've all it actually... takes. And why do you want why do you want to do that to your brand? I feel like that's the thing. People don't think of many things. I'm not saying everything needs to be a brand, but it's like people mm-hmm. don't think of long term repercussions of this. Yes. Where it's like now everybody who comes to your community is gonna know that you ripped off mm-hmm. you you ripped off this from another creator. Mm-hmm. So what's the point? I, what's crazy is that I've actually had people from my community tell me wow. about creators that they have come into contact with who have a similar welcome phrase to mine like down to the pattern of the way the words are said and i have politely told them you don't need to tell me you Mm -hmm. know i don't even know who that person is you don't need to tell me or maybe i do know who the person is you still need to tell me because it's not again if it's not genuine it's gonna come off as not genuine so um that's why i always tell people if you have a question Come ask the question. Mm-hmm. Right? Because 
Yeah. You can't take something that I pulled out of my ass my first month into streaming, <laughs> exactly. literally on the fly, and it just became a staple. And you just said, oh, I like the way that sounds. I'm going to verbatim say the same thing and change one or two things. It Exactly. Exactly. I feel that. I, I very much agree with everything you said. And of course, I'm not a lawyer, so don't nobody listen to anything right. that I've said um and start thinking that this is legal ground i've just watched a lot of scandal and how to get away with murder but the reality is there's a lot of people who will steal your content ideas there are people mm -hmm. i mean look at Die Hard diva wasn't there someone literally just yes. re-uploading yep. her contents and whatnot yes. there are people who will literally do that um and it happens all the time so i think the best thing when it comes to sorry i'm scrolling back up to the question the best thing that it can do you, do you think there's such a thing as intellectual property that should be exclusively yours? There are things that mm -hmm. are yours. The content that I've made to an extent logos. is mine. Someone can't just, yeah, logos. Someone can't just go and like re-upload those things. Because realistically, if you were a giant company, this in the same way that someone can't just go and slap a Microsoft sticker on something, it's, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. Like this is something that is yours. And there are many people who will protect that. There are many people who mm -hmm. have the resources and they will sue the pants off of you. I'm not trying mm -hmm. to fuck around and find out. So all the things that I've made are, are me. If someone copies my content style and stuff like that, like Lainey said, that's perfectly fine. If someone edits a video in the same way that I do or anything, that's okay. But the, the end of the day, they're not me. They're not going to exactly. tell the story in the same way that I did. They're not going to be able to edit something in the same way that I did. And that, at the end of the day, is the, the greatest satisfaction because you're not me. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I think that that's the hardest part, too, when you first start streaming, is that it's hard to find your identity. And it's hard to find, like, well, what do I want to do? Do I need to have a theme? Do I need to, mm -hmm. you know, do X, Y, Z? And I just take it one day at a time but more important yes. always be authentically yourself regardless of whatever your gimmick yes, is or whatever two. that is like just be yourself literally i was i've talked about this so much um i was speaking with someone whose stream i was in last night and i talked about this a little bit earlier on my stream today um in that sometimes creators because they see their favorite creators and whatnot and they don't understand that like a large creator who's been doing this for maybe 10 years who has all these sponsorships and things like that they didn't start there but that's where you met this creator and they yes. think that for them to start streaming that they need to be on the same level and have the same quality of content all the same sponsors and things like that but that's just the it just doesn't it just doesn't happen like that unfortunately if it does good for you but in 99.9% .9 of the times mm -hmm. it doesn't happen like that so take things day by day when I started streaming like I said my first streams were from my Xbox and then after mm -hmm. that, I built a computer. I didn't even have a camera. I used a microphone that I had for a while because I was like, I'm not gonna go and buy a bunch of things even though I know I wanted the Go XLR and I wanted mm -hmm. like this and that. I'm like, I'm not gonna go and spend a bunch of money on this if I know it's not something that I might keep up with because there's so mm -hmm. many creators I know that have spent thousands on their setup, but because they didn't get that instant community, they instantly were just like, well, this isn't for me, but now yep. I'm, 300, I'm three grand in the hole when it's like, because it takes more than just it takes more than just high quality mm -hmm. um co like like things it takes more than the microphone that i have than the cameras it takes more than mm -hmm. that you have to develop your skills in so many different ways and like if i look back to when i started streaming to today um I was a different person in the sense that I wasn't as comfortable on camera I was still me but I wasn't as out of my shell like I wouldn't tell y'all shit about myself but now I will literally be like I y'all so one time <laughs> I put my pants in high school. Um, I will literally, I just was not as comfortable as I am today. And that's not a bad thing, but it, this is where it's like when I started streaming, I, I had that where I was like, I want to do YouTube. I want to do this. I want to do TikTok. I want to do all mm -hmm. these sort of things. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. But then the realization that I had um, was I was just kind of like, but I don't really know my community and my community doesn't right. really know me. So if I'm trying to branch out into other places, how am I really going to do that when we just don't know each other um, that well? Mm -hmm. And that was my thing where I was like, you know what? I'm not, everyone's here trying to get on like stream teams. And I tried that and mm -hmm. then it was a negative experience within me. Yeah. So it was just kind of like, you know what? I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to focus on building my community and really just getting to know each other, playing games that we like 
understanding who I am as a creator and why I want to be here. And I spent a year truly doing that. When sponsorships came, I was like, nope, I don't want to do that. If people ask mm-hmm. me to do certain things, no, I don't really want to do that. It's not what I'm focused on. Because I'm like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, sponsorship money's not going anywhere. You may not get that campaign, but it's not the last campaign in the world. There's always mm-hmm. money. There's always sponsorship. Always. So I was like, we're going to focus on just this community aspect for this year. And I think it was the greatest thing that I ever did because I was able to really cultivate a space that I think is just remarkable and a space that I mm-hmm. think has grown so rapidly so that when people do come in and they're like, Chris, I love the vibe here. What you've done with this community is amazing. And like that didn't happen overnight. That mm-hmm. took months and that took a lot of time and me really deciding what I wanted to exist here. And for me, really cutting out people who I thought didn't belong in the space because um, there was there was some shit. Um, and that's that why is. anytime people, I see people starting, I'm like, take it day by day and focus on your community because mm-hmm. the community is what's going to really bring, it's, it's what's going to set you apart. The community mm-hmm. is the people that are going to come and support you and whatnot. You can have all the latest things, all the latest gears. You can mm-hmm. sell every microphone and get the latest things. But if you don't have that community, numbers are great but if you don't have the community it means nothing that's exactly because it's like it numbers, are numbers. numbers are numbers numbers are numbers and also to support get you support now i'm not saying mm-hmm. follow for follow that's not what i'm saying here's Please, what i'm thank saying you for clarifying that up you need thank you. to enmesh yourself in other communities mm-hmm. you need to get to know other creators and not on some clout shit you need mm-hmm. to genuinely get to know people we because can tell. Yeah. we can, we can tell. tell i can tell when people only answer okay. certain tweets when certain of my large friends follow answer something okay. i can tell okay for example chris and i chris just followed me on twitter and i was like i was like oh it's a black person let me inspect <laughs> and i just breezed down the timeline i was like that looked pretty cool doom and then i think it was like within a couple of days you went live and i stopped by your stream and i got to know you that way right and so mm-hmm. you know it was because i went out of my way to say this person looks pretty cool let me check them out and and it wasn't like a so like what do you do like it wasn't anything like that it was just like hey how you doing how's your day going you know and just organically just had a conversation and enmeshed myself into his community you know and mm-hmm. um i see somebody said earlier um it's been so hard to convince myself of this is a new small streamer um the pressure is externally uh, weirdly externally applied and internally applied oh absolutely um mm-hmm. and ash said that's why a lot of people quit streaming after a while because they think they'll get recognition quickly you should never come into this with money on your brain i'm sorry exactly you, you like, are not no expectations you are not markiplier you are not Jack Accepted guy. You are not Pokemon. You are and not those people. And that's why it happens. Those people. Mm-hmm. And that's why it happens because a lot of people see these large creators like Ninja and whatnot. They're like, oh, I can do that. I can, I can, I can do that. I can, I'm good at Fortnite. So I can just like, just get on camera and like speak. But then it's like, you don't, when you think of even creators that you necessarily may not like as much, when you think of all the different aspects of streaming that there are, being able to be entertaining to speak with chat and just balance all those different Mm -hmm. hats it's not something that you learn overnight it's not something that just happens me being as comfortable and good at it as i am now took a year a year (laughs) so it's like um a lot of people think and i think it's because we also just live in this world of instant gratification um where people think that they can just try something and if it doesn't work and if it if it doesn't work then it's like well people just didn't show up and support me and things like that and i always um, we'll flip it on them and I'm like, okay, well, like, what did you do? Did you just click go live? All of that content. What did you, mm-hmm. what did you do? Did you post your content anywhere else? Did you try and get involved in mm-hmm. other communities? Like, what did you, what did you actually do? Because it's like, reality is you can, you need to meet people halfway. Yes. Going live is only half the battle. Mm-hmm. Going live is just half the work. People don't have to come and watch your streams. People mm-hmm. don't have to come and show up in any regards. At but all. what are you doing to actually make it worthwhile for the people who do because people will do that they'll be like there will be 10 people in their chat that are lurking and whatnot and mm-hmm. then they'll be like well there's no one actively speaking in chat and or, or they'll just they're just still there just always see the negative it people yeah. will just see the negative and things and it's like and you know what there's some people that really do that will come into streaming that will come into any consecration thing for the wrong reasons and unfortunately yes. that's on them but that's not mm-hmm. why that's why i'm not 
I'm not I'm not up in here. What's going on? Who's sending the whole email? Up in chat? So, I'm, so I see a whole email and I'm like, let me let me let me creep what's going on up in yes. here. Yes. <laughs> so my friend Hells um said I had some streamer come into my stream complaining about his growth and was throwing shade at me for playing the same game as him but having more viewers. He had the balls to send me an email wanting to collab afterwards. Wow. And you know what's crazy too? So Hells found me. Okay. I was playing DVD randomly and Hell was just like, was like, hello. And I was actually having a shitty day. I was having like a very shitty day. And when she raided me, it was like, oh, oh, hi. And another thing too, if people raid you, I highly suggest checking them out. When you end your stream, 100%. check them out. You know, go look at their content. You know, like go in a VOD and see, you know, what it is. You never know the missing connections you lose out on because you don't do any follow-up. Mm -hmm. And I've met so many amazing creators. That's why whenever I am my stream, if I ever received a raid, I do my best to account for each individual raid on my Twitter thread. That's just me personally, because people don't mm -hmm. have to give their communities to you. Yeah, listen. I am so I am so particular about who the fuck I raid. It Listen. <laughs> Because I feel like we all have done the thing where you meet someone and you're not, you don't know 100% about them, but you want to support and you raid over to them and then you get up in there and you're like, what the hell is this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just put your shoes on the couch. Like, like, like y'all got, like... your, got your outside clothes on in the bed? Mm-hmm. Y'all didn't wash the chicken? God, it's bad. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 because that, that happened to me. That happened to me. Nagooms, oh, hi, no. how are you? Um, and where I raided someone and I trusted because I'm like, I knew them from a number mm. of years ago, back in high school and whatnot. So I'm like, I trusted it. And then a little bit later, they were involved in all this drama stuff. And then that's when I was Yikes. like, if it's someone whose content I don't watch, I'm not. Oh, raided. yeah, no. And something my no. do there. But then mm -hmm. I did that intentionally, too, because I always try and... I always try and keep up with newer creators and mm -hmm. creators of just that are because I'm like I don't want to just raid the same people. I always want to yes. just know different things. And like Lainey said, sometimes people find you just from just from liking your content. That literally mm -hmm. is how me and Lainey met because I know, and I'm pretty sure it's probably me because I always say the only people that I will 99.9% .9 of the fact time follow back is probably black creators. Because I'm always Period. like, one of the reasons I came on here is because I was like, I don't see any black streamers. So I'm like, of course I'm going to support black creators unless I see some shit not to. Like if I see some Dr. Umar or I see you <laughs> having these podcast <laughs> boys on your page, I'm not following you back. Um, but I know that's how we met and things like that. And Lainey's, Lainey completely said it. And that's how I met so many of my streamer friends now, even larger creators that followed me. Like we may have just followed each other on Twitter and things like that. And then just seeing each other around and then we poke into their, into the streams and say, Hey, like, how are you? And whatnot. And just generally forming authentic relationships with each other where it's like, I'm not following this person back. Like, Oh shit, maybe one day they'll raid me and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Cause someone could rage, somebody could rage you with a thousand people and not one of them follow you. So it, it's not it's not about that, but it's like so. Do you want the raid, or do you want an or you do you want an authentic relationship with a mm -hmm. creator? Because that's mm -hmm. what I want. I want to make authentic relationship with people on the internet, and that's yep. my my biggest thing that I think I've gotten out of this. Because even creators that I admire, like like Ashley Roboto, someone mm -hmm. who I thought was super cool, um, followed me, and she's just like, yeah, I see, I, I I see you on the timeline so much. So like, of course I followed you back. And I'm like, oh, sick. You're from, you're from the same place I'm from. That's awesome. And then a couple mm -hmm. months later we had lunch. So it's like small things like that. that is just, it, 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 it just happens. But like, I feel like a lot of people sometimes just expect it's the entitlement. Like people said, um, when it comes into mm -hmm. new spaces, just thinking that everyone should stop what they're doing and go and watch mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. every streamer should just be flocking to to them and that's why i'm always like twitter is a great place to be what if you're a streamer within reason twitter is yes. not the place to be doing follow for follow or anything like that mm -hmm. if there's someone if there's somewhere i will more likely follow someone on twitch than on twitter in some cases because twitter i see too much and stuff like that because <laughs> twitter especially with streamers sometimes can be very drama centric and yeah. you really do need to curate your space. You 100% need to really mm -hmm. be mindful of who you're following because there are some people who at the drop of a pin will pick something up and run with it, even if it doesn't involve yes. them. And it's mm -hmm. 
hey, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. But you don't have to do that. Exactly. Um, and uh, Mike has a good point in chat. That's why on Twitter I always check the likes because people don't always fill their ass on the timeline. No, 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 no. Don't check my them. likes. Do not check my likes. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't check Chris's likes. Because... I mean, either way, you're fucked because it's either terror on the timeline, on the main timeline, or God forbid you check the likes. <laughs> and God damn you if you check the likes. Sometimes they're just, just random shit posts that I just see on the timeline that I'm like, yeah, this is funny. <laughs> it's nothing like bad. It's just, just a lot of shit posts. Um, mm -hmm. But, but truly, it's, it's, it's interesting and sometimes i literally think about it but like even with my friends like some of my closest friends that i've met from twitch i'm like y'all a year ago i didn't know you and now like yeah some of you, i speak to you every day exactly. every single day because it's like you've just formed that authentic relationship and i think that that's where Lainey's point of like just show up show up every single time you stream as yourself i am yeah. the same way that i am in real life um on stream except i just don't talk as much in real life i'm i'm not gonna say Ooh, i'm shy but i'm like i'm more quiet and, and things that I'm much more of a spoken speak when spoken to mm -hmm. and whatnot and I think the person who maybe sees me at my most me is my partner because we've been together for going on five years Aww. um but, but yeah just be yourself we don't need another ninja we don't need another Jackie Aina exactly. we don't need another Chris we don't need another mm -hmm. Lainey we already have these people but we don't have someone who has all the things that you as a, as mm -hmm. a creator have to offer so be you you may think that you're not interesting or anything like that but a million people will because one thing about me i thought my voice was just a regular ass voice but i get on twitch you have I a very you, calming at least voice once, at least once a day someone's saying i got a calming voice at least yes. once a day someone's telling me to read them bedtime stories never in my life until i came up on here so do your thing <laughs> i i highly vouch for you to have like a podcast where you just read short stories Honestly, I've thought of things like that for like charity redemptions and, and, mm -hmm. and stuff. So I was like, we'll see. Cause like for stuff like that, I'm like, this is where it's like, it's not about money for things like that. Like I'd rather it go to like charities. Cause I do like fundraising for charity. Cause our community has done amazing things. So yes, it's, it's one of those things. Streams. Oh, this one. Uh, from I read Mike it again. super quick and I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> Did it take you a while to figure out what boundaries you want to set as a streamer for your viewers? And how do you handle people who seem to push those boundaries? Um, let's just say you need boundaries. Even if you don't think you need them. You need boundaries. And if because you struggle... Crossed, you okay. And if you struggle with them, like IRL, like with like friends and family, I highly encourage you to practice them with strangers on the internet. Because mm -hmm. people will assume a lot about you from the way that you stream. And Chris, any streamer can attest to this. When you stream, you're a little bit more heightened than usual. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're, you know, you're checking chat, interacting with engagement, making sure everybody's good. Is my sound good? Is, am I gonna die mm -hmm. in this game? Like, you know, you're, you have so much going on, but it's not necessarily 100% you. Because like Chris said, when he's offline, doesn't talk as much, pretty quiet, right? With like, when I'm or offline- you play games with me offline, I'm right. not- it's still me, but I'm not as right. uppity. Right, because the, the idea to entertain does not mm -hmm. <laughs> um, activate when uh, the camera's off. And exactly. people will say, like, um, I had one person, they had joined my community, they had been there maybe a week, and they had hmm. said, I, I feel like I know you, and I, and I literally stopped mid-DBD, and I was like, you do not know me. I want to make that very clear. I am so happy that you've come here and that you have found a community that you believe that, you know, you can really enmesh yourself in and get to know people, but you do not know me. Mm -hmm. You do not. And it's okay that you don't know me. Okay. I'll give you a great example. I went to TwitchCon, saw a hell of creators, okay, that I really admired that I thought were absolutely amazing. One of them, I ironically watched his YouTube video before I went to his meet and greet, right? but they're still people mm -hmm. and I stopped them, you know, and, and um, like Gassy Mexican, one of the OG YouTubers, love his content because he's from Chicago too. And he just casually last, the last day of TwitchCon, we're all leaving the venue and he's just walking past me. And I literally, and he was by himself and I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, Max? And he was like, yes. And I was like, 
hi, like, I love your content. I, you know, I'm also from Chicago. I said, no shit. I was like, yeah. He was like, you want a picture? I said, yeah. Took a picture. And he went on his merry way. You can admire somebody, but acknowledge the fact that it doesn't matter how long you've been watching their content, you do not know them. Mm -hmm. You do not know them personally. And that is okay. It is okay for you to appreciate somebody's content and what that does for you, but that does not entitle you to know personal things about their life, to know who they're dating, to know anything along those lines. It's none of your business. Exactly. Exactly. None of your business. Um, to answer this question, how long did it take to figure out boundaries? Um, pretty quickly, because like most people on Twitch that have like different names, like Blaney Love, Die Hard Diva and whatnot, my legitimate ass name is out there. <laughs> it's like just Chris Lawrence. It's literally my name. Mm -hmm. Only difference is there's not two A's in my last name. And I started to notice it when people were like, Chris, you have your name on Twitch. And I was like, is that like bad? This was just the account that I had. So then I started to kind of um notice boundaries things just more so of people knowing my name and then starting not necessarily with twitch but starting to see just the the boundaries i needed to have in my own personal life mm. for my like career which is also using the same name as <laughs> with my stream which is yeah. also using the same name <laughs> so that i think is where boundaries definitely came in a little bit further but then um i think as i started to learn more about myself and then learning more about just other people because i'm someone who i go to therapy and i and i speak with my therapist about many things including boundaries and whatnot but the reality of this world is that not everybody has that same access to a therapist to talk yeah. through what boundaries are and you don't know what experience or mm -hmm. anything anyone's gone through and many people sometimes do not have boundaries and they mm -hmm. will push they will take every inch you give and yeah. that's where you really do have to start developing boundaries as lady said and saying like you actually don't know me and one thing that i have happen so often at times is people being like oh my god chris lawrence followed me back and i'm just like hey i'm literally a person i'm just a mm -hmm. creator i saw that you're a streamer i took a peek yeah. at your content and i think you're i think like you make cool things so like yeah of course i'd follow back or like if i go to like a stream they'll be like oh my gosh chris what are you doing here and i'm like i'm literally nobody on this platform i am you're making it mm -hmm. seem like i am jesus that just popped up in here and things like mm -hmm. that and really setting that boundary of being like hey do not put me on a pedestal because mm -hmm. i'm a person there's no need and i want this proof here that anytime someone's done this i've said like hey don't put me on no pedestal i'm not up there i'm not saying i'm better than nobody i'm not participating in any of these things because mm -hmm. i know that that happens so much in internet culture and then the smallest thing happens like i say i don't like oxtail or anything like that literally mm -hmm. as being a vegetarian and people already write twit longers about me i don't need any of that in my life yeah. i don't want none of that smoke because that's just the that's just the reality of the internet in sense so i think boundaries in that sense and even like making rules when it comes to discords or the community and things like mm -hmm. that some things that have become a rule are kind of just some shit that's happened with people coming to the stream and i'm like hey i actually didn't really like that very much um mm -hmm. but the one thing that i can say that helps make boundaries a little bit easier is having great mods that yes. you really can trust mods mm -hmm. that really um know you know your community very well and can kind of just understand things shout out to nikki crispy borgo amanda all of my amazing mods because they know so much and they do so much work in the background because mm -hmm. listen i always make jokes I always make jokes and I'm like, listen, if you have a problem with one of my mods, that is on you and the mods. Okay. I just work here because I just work here. I just work here. That has nothing to do with that me. That I just work here. <laughs> listen, if Nikki bans you, because my mods are swift. They are so fast. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, yo, I didn't even see what happened. I just see, I just see people getting banned left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's it's super it's super strange um and i understand sometimes i guess with people when they're newer they think that like mm. you're more established and stuff like that as a streamer but like that's why like the other day on stream i talked about like whether it's me whether it's beyonce whether it's anyone that follows you like please don't put merit on follows because a follow doesn't mean right more than they just yeah. click the button or anything like that like don't build anything off that because like mm -hmm. it's this this world is so much more there's so much more to the internet than just yeah. who follows you who doesn't because i mean if this listen this internet shit can be gone tomorrow mm -hmm. and if it's gone that follow means nothing all of this exactly. they can pull the plug on this at any time um so i always try and really be as humble as possible and mm -hmm. but really be very firm when things make me uncomfortable because 
sometimes people don't know things until they until you mention it um because mm -hmm. like laney said people assume they know you um but sometimes you. you gotta remind people you you have no mm -hmm. idea who i am <laughs> yes and it's okay and don't feel like you know oh well it, it's me being me sometimes people need that sometimes people mm -hmm. need that shock Oops, my captions of... crashed oh no captions no i'll get you another end out of memory oh no am i talking too memory. much <laughs> i guess i'm talking too much <laughs> are you talking too much i'm sorry y'all no you're good let me know do you need me to send you another one i think so yeah it says that one's broken Okay, hold on. I'm gonna switch to this one real swift so that right. I can do this and then message you this. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, no, it legit said Chris talked too much. <laughs> I'm being silenced. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm screaming. Okay. There we go. I'm okay. back. Welcome back. Um, but yeah, especially as a, as a therapist, I think I, I think I had the benefit of already having boundaries, um, mm -hmm. and being taught boundaries. So I'm grateful for that because I don't, I don't play that shit. I, I, I just don't. Yeah. If, if you come in and straight up, like if you come, here's my thing. If you come into a chat, right. You say, hello. You say, if you need to, how's everybody doing? Okay, and then mm -hmm. if that streamer goes, how are you? And you say, oh, I'm not doing too good. And then they say, what happened? Then you can trauma dump. You do not just come in with your shit and go like, all right, kick off your fucking shoes and drop your baggage in my chat. Just like a whole mm -hmm. paragraph. It's like, hello. Hi. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Okay, no, we have manners in here. We have manners in here. And furthermore, while we're on the subject of trauma dumping, okay, you can express how you feel without triggering people. Mm-hmm. That's one. Two, streamers are not your therapists. Me, being a licensed therapist, I'm still not your fucking therapist. Listen. Okay? Let's get, let's get that together. Real swift. All right? So if I come at you, and, and I'm just like, hey, don't do that. And your initial reaction isn't, oh, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. And you got a problem? You, my friend, need to learn boundaries. Lots of them, okay? And I, but the, the thing is, so you have to be careful. Cause I'll just straight up tell you, hey, yo, don't do that. I will call you out in front of everybody. Don't do that. And furthermore, if you have, here's my thing. If you are close enough to a streamer, while we're on a subject of this, to the point where you have a VIP badge, and there is a problem, just tell the streamer. Have the conversation with the streamer. I don't, don't do it. If there is a problem, I tell my community all the fucking time, if you have a problem with me, if I've ever done something to upset you and you're, and I treat all people that value members of my community, you tell me directly. Exactly. If I, I don't, I don't want to hear you, this happened to something else and not some, no, you come directly to me with that. Period. We're not, nobody's perfect. However, nobody can learn if you don't tell them. Exactly. If a streamer says exactly. something that's out of pocket, racist, homophobic, whatever, and they don't realize they said it that way or where the context was or they need education about something and you truly feel that way, just tell them. Hell, say it in chat. Hey, I don't know if you know, but that's X, Y, and Z. Especially when we're talking about gamer words, right? If I could go full screen on the screen, oh, I, you would have seen my face like. Okay. All right, you when you're on any site doing any kind of content creation, you abide by that site's terms of service. Yep. I don't want to hear that yep. free speech bullshit. You gave that up when you signed <laughs> the terms of service to do stuff on this platform. All right. Ugh, God, I'm waiting for the day that someone's like, what about my, <laughs> is it like, 
the First Amendment or whatever it is? What about my amendment rights to speak in the that just so I can be like, listen, homeboy, I'm a Canadian. So if there's okay. any chat my this is not going to work in, if there's any chat that this is not going to work in, it is mine. Please. Mm -hmm. Go away. Uh, we don't we don't okay. do that amendments stuff up here. Don't make me send the Mounties. Wait, wait, wait. If you say you have the freedom to say whatever you want, then people have the freedom to beat your ass for whatever you say. Listen, listen. And then when it happens, it's like, listen, you wouldn't got your ass beat if you didn't say that. You wouldn't got your ass beat if you just kept if you just mm -hmm. kept that mouth, that hole in your uh -huh. face shut. Wait, my favorite ones are oh, it's just a word. Okay, go up to him on the corner and say it then. No, 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 go on the corner. No, go to him on the corner and say it then, since it's just a word. And I want to see what happens to you. Period, poo. Mm-hmm. You're going to have your fucking dome on on the corner. Fuck around and find out, because you don't know how to be respectful. Literally, literally. Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Lord Jesus. Can I read the next question? Yes, you can. This one. This Go one is it. from Word Fangirl, semi-related, but what is your best advice for balancing other platforms along streaming? Twitter presence versus Twitch, mm. etc. I love this question because I get it I so often. Um, and I say that there is no answer to this question, but <laughs> you need to do what works for you. I think yeah. something that a lot of streamers burn out because is they try and be everywhere at once and yeah. they try and do YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, Hulu, Tumblr, Netflix, all these things all at one time um, when it's just not the same. It's great for like people like Gary Vee to be like, you need to be posting content everywhere and all these things. But Gary Vaynerchuk has a team. You are your team. You can't cover all hours of the day. So you need to understand what platforms work for you. I am a big proponent for even when new platforms come out and things like that. Go you and save your jump. username on the platform. Go save your username on it so you don't yeah. have any issues when you want it. Because I do that. If something yeah. new comes out, I'm mm -hmm. saving my username on it. Because even, listen, when I tell people, people think I'm joking, but I'm like, listen, even OnlyFans, I have my username. I don't you use do? it, but no one else, no one else is getting Chris Lawrence to two ways on OnlyFans and going to be making any kind of content using my name. There is no way. <laughs> there is no way. I'm going to allow that to happen. So no, no one's doing it. But truly, even on OnlyFans. Um, but um, know the platforms that work for you and just take your time. I created content on Twitch for a year before I really started diving more into TikTok because I only started getting to TikTok more in November. Mm. And I started streaming in what? November? Yeah, November. In November of last year. And that was basically it i'd had tiktok the entire time i just never wanted to you know dive into it but twitter mm -hmm. was my main platform instagram is something even before i started streaming i was never really on too much so i'm like yeah. I, I dabble here and there but like take it day by day and know that as the more platforms that you add on you will need to have more strategies for that platform yeah. specifically because twitter is not going to work the same way as tiktok tiktok mm -hmm. will not work like youtube so you will need to have the time to keep those contents mills not content mills that sounds bad but to keep those <laughs> like to keep, to keep things flowing there because when you try and do too much things and you realize all the work it takes this is exactly why when we saw um during like the hate rage and things like that a lot of mm. a bunch of people that were like i'm just gonna leave and go to this platform i'm just gonna leave and go here and whatnot a lot of them ended up coming back to twitch because yeah. it's great to leave when things are like tense and whatnot but then you realize all the work that it's going to take to build a new audience in a completely new place because while it's great and in an ideal world when you leave somewhere and your audience will come with you it's great to think like that but if your audience is just used to using twitch wants to stay with twitch and whatnot they will just keep watching things on twitch and you will realize that it takes a lot more work than just moving from one place. And that's not, that's no shade mm -hmm. to anyone who did make those moves, but that's exactly why I was like, look, I know these hate raids kind of are shit, but like I spent a lot of time building okay. what I'm building here and I'm really enjoying this. Like I can't just pick up and just mm -hmm. do all this again and just throw all this work away. Um, so everything takes time, everything takes strategies mm -hmm. and everything's not gonna be built in one night. Your first TikTok could go viral, it mm -hmm. might not, but keep trying, keep mm -hmm. trying. I and posted you, 22 uh, I posted 22 TikToks before any of them went viral. 22. Yeah. And um what's crazy too is that we're having the conversation of like balancing out your content creation for full transparency without me getting sued because I signed an NDA. Um I was offered 
an opportunity, a paid opportunity to stream on another platform mm -hmm. last year. And I did not take it. I think I know the one, but oh. Mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. not take it because I worked my ass off over here. I worked way too fucking hard. Um, and that it, it is a lot to for me to tell damn near 4,000 people, hey, you know how like we live here and like this is the house and like this is our Christmas tree. That's probably never going to go down because I'm lazy. Um, let's just all leave and go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. No, like that's not. That's not. No, what what's not clicking? No, absolutely not. That it's a lot for to, for you to request of your community. It's a lot mm -hmm. to request of anybody. Not everybody's gonna follow you. Exactly, and there are some that will because yeah. that's actually how I came to Twitch because I used to watch mm. Kang Gaming when I was in university, and then there was a point where Kang came over from YouTube Gaming to Twitch. And then that was, I was kind of like, well, what's Twitch? And I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. at this point, like Mixer was still a thing and it was like all these things going on. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, okay, you know what? Sure, like we'll come over. And then it was like, he would do like some here and there back and forth and whatnot. But then that's kind of what brought me to Twitch. So there are people that will, mm -hmm. that will make the move and will come because they generally like your content, but it's not easy. It's not easy. No, it's not easy at all. But um, in terms of, balancing you can have like instagram dedicated to maybe selfies of you like each mm -hmm. platform should have a different piece of you um exactly. to make people individually go there so i would suggest that but in terms of promoting on those those that's a different conversation um mm -hmm. uh mike's in another question what are some streamer viewer etiquettes you feel that more people need to be aware of um i think especially for me yeah don't, don't fucking backseat back i will me. fuck do, no well what do you mean it's not that hard fuck you it's hard for me <laughs> kiss my ass that's one um be careful of over familiarity yes be very careful you can come into you know something you can be there for maybe like a week or two but that doesn't mean that you can make the same jokes as like regulars or VIPs or mods towards a streamer. So be very cautious that you can't get in on that joke. Um, I would also say come in ha on both sides, no expectations. Mm -hmm. Do not assume that you're gonna get preferential treatment because you're on the newer tip. Here's how I feel. If you want to get to know me and my community, you're gonna stick around regardless because you exactly. like what you see. I'm not gonna try to convince you to stay. Um, but, uh, streamers, you don't have to tell me you're a streamer. You don't have to tell me you're a streamer. Sometimes I will, I, I can just tell based off your name. If you have like two TV mm -hmm. in your name, <laughs> um, you mm -hmm. don't have to tell me you stream. I can just tell, um, I will probably already know who you are by word of mouth or by, you know, Twitter or other kind of socials, you know, pe people know people. And once you have one circle of people that knows each other, it kind of blends into another circle of people. You recognize people. Like, um, I remember Mira raided me, Melee Mira raided me and Daydreamer mm -hmm. Dan came in the raid. And I was like, oh shit, I know who that is. Cause I see Dan on Twitter. And I was like, mm -hmm. hey, I know who you are. Congratulations on getting pardoned. I know you don't know me and that's weird, but I just want to acknowledge that, you know, for you. And he was like, he was really appreciative of it because I didn't make it weird. Yeah. You're able to acknowledge somebody in the content that they make without being like, exactly. hi, Kevin. Like, you know, there's a way that you're able to Not acknowledge hi, Kevin. that. Not hi, and Kevin. Yeah. Also, another way to kind of show it to you, um, if you're in somebody's discord, Use streamer mode so people know that you're live in Discord. It's another way that people can find out organically that you stream without you having to promote yourself. Exactly. Uh, streamer editing. While we're on the topic of Discords, um, mm -hmm. don't just go in people's Discords just to go into their promo self things. I'm gonna be very honest. Streamers don't have the don't have the channel. Don't have the, don't have, don't the, have the, channel. the channel for self promotion. I don't think it's needed. Or if you do have them, you can have ones where there's bots that will post when people go live, but it's controlled completely by you. Yeah. Um because I think I had one for maybe 
not even a full day. And I was like, I didn't even tell nobody that this was here. So there's people that will just search and just post through everyone's different things. And it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. People aren't going to go You're just giving everybody a notification that we're going to clear. Um, so I would say that, um, what other etiquettes again, don't backseat. Um, don't question the mods, but mm -hmm. like, it's, it's very, it's very annoying when you question the mods, the mods know what they're doing. I, I guarantee you it's not the mods first day. And even if it is their first day, any mods of a community, it's not, it, it, it's, I mean, if it's their first day being a mod, it's not their first day in this community. They are not just meeting the creator. Like they know what's going on and they're a mod for a reason. So like, don't try and explain to mods or anything like that. I think also too, if you see a creator that you like in someone else's stream, um, you don't have to, um, take attention away from the actual streamer to focus on that person mm -hmm. within ways like it's okay to say hi it is totally okay to mm -hmm. say hi but then sometimes being like oh my gosh like did you guys see chris's scream oh my gosh chris is doing this and whatnot when it's like hey this creator is trying to stream right. and i will always be that person that's like hey thanks means a lot but like this person's streaming let's focus on this like i will audibly say it because it's like now you're taking the attention away from me and mm -hmm. next time i come up in here i'm going to come up in here on my alt because i have one mm -hmm. um so I'd say definitely things like that. But what other streamer, streamer viewer Let's etiquette see. can I think um, of? Um, don't call out your, if you, if you have a quiet chat and people are lurking, don't make people feel bad for lurking. Yes. Yes. Your job is to entertain and keep yourself entertained. If it means you need to immerse yourself more into the gameplay and focus more on your story or what's happening there, do that. But don't ever call out your lurkers or be unappreciative of people that are spending time to out of their exactly. real life to spend time with you on the internet. Do not do that. You, you come off very, very just unappreciative. I'm grateful. I'm yeah. grateful. Cause I've Terrible. been in chats where they've yes, gone and don't the mention and the like, count either. and absent and mentioned people. And it's like, um, mm -hmm. While I'm a streamer and while I'm very social on the internet and whatnot, I'm very lurk heavy and things like that. And people have definitely said, like, mentioned something or, like, said my name in their streams, not even knowing that I'm there. But I'll literally be like, well, what, what's going on in here? Because mm -hmm. they have no idea that I've been there for an hour. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just, I, yeah. I honestly am just a lurking person sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. if Lainey's playing Dead by Daylight, nine out of ten times I'm in there watching and I'll be like, Lainey, chill. Lady, stop. Like, why are you doing this to these people with these hatches? Lady, please chill. <laughs> Let these survivors have a chance. Um, so yeah, don't make lurkers. And it, it, there's just this this connotation that the only viewers of value at times are people who are chatting, who are actually active mm -hmm. and things like that. But that's just not the truth because mm -hmm. I'm such a big lurker because I watch streams while I'm working or anything mm -hmm. like that. And lurkers make up literally, lurkers make up a majority of Twitch. So I don't understand mm -hmm. why people are like fuck lurkers or anything like that if you don't want lurkers or whatnot send them over to my community because they know that they're welcome they know that i'm not going to shame them and you know what? what what do you want people to do not everybody wants to talk in chats mm -hmm. and i just remembered another one too this is kind of what, what prompted me to stream to be honest with you there was a creator um maybe about six months before i started streaming i was in in like invested myself into his community and he got jealous of somebody who is currently currently a very successful partner streamer um by the time this person was not partnered and so neither one of them were partnered at the time um the the one that complained is still not partnered but anyway um he You're called like, out his mods he called out his moderators for spending time in this person's chat moderators and he was like why are you over there why are you all spending time with him? I'm the whole reason you know who that person is. And guess what? That same mod that he questioned is now a mod for that very partnered streamer right now. And mm. another thing too, another thing I, I would say too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> comes, comes back clownery? to bite. Also, if people choose, yo, if people choose to leave your community, do not message them asking them why they left your community. Or please don't ask you why. Please don't ask me why I'm why you're banned on a platform. Please don't, because I will tell you. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> people, if people choose to unfollow you, if people choose to leave your communities, it's their reason to do so. If on your end you were always genuine, maybe they had their reasons for doing so. Maybe it was maybe they just don't watch you anymore. But wish people well. People go in waves on this platform okay there are people that i felt that i have not watched in years 
but it doesn't mean that I don't wish them well and I don't hope they're doing well. And sometimes I may even pop in maybe once every six months. Hey, how you doing? How are things going? But I don't assume that that person, I don't expect preferential treatment when I do come through because I have not been around. Mm -hmm. So understand that when you have gone somewhere for a long time and you come back, you have to approach that neutrally because you've been gone. People change all the time. People grow and evolve as people. We all grow. I am not the same person I was six months ago. I am not the same person I was a year ago. So whenever Especially you've been gone, pandemic. okay. When you, <laughs> listen, I walked in here 27. I'm 30 this year. <laughs> God damn God, I, I know, lost my whole late twenties. I'm sad, but I am not the person that I was when I came back in. Right, when I, when I walked in the pandemic, I don't even know who that is anymore. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mindful that when you have taken time away from a community and you're trying to come back, you're welcome to come back. But don't just walk up in here like I saw you yesterday. You got to build exactly. that back up. Okay. Let let people go and come as as they wish. It Nine times out of ten has nothing to do with you. Exactly. Exactly. Cosign. I can't, I cannot agree more. Um, literally. And, but also, not everybody on this platform has to like you. Not everybody on this platform has to watch you. Not every viewer has to enjoy your streams. And that's just a part of life. That is simply just a part of life. People will hate you for existing. Exactly. I literally tweeted about this the other day when someone was like, how do you get used to people having negative opinions about you or anything? And I just was like, you know what? No matter what I do in this world, someone is going to have an opinion of me. Whether I'm literally the greatest, if I'm the person who gives the most money, someone's going to have an opinion about it. If I'm someone who stings you with my money, someone's going to have an opinion on it. If I mm -hmm. stream like this, someone's going to have something to say. If someone, if I do this, so I'm like, all I can do is just do the shit that's going to make me happy and be as good of a person that I can. And not everybody can like me. And as if someone has an opinion about me that they've, that they've of, of a narrative that they created in their head, unfortunately, it has nothing to do with me because mm -hmm. it's something that they made up. That hasn't like, I can't, I can't control that. You're, they're allowed to make any of those things up. But until it's, until it becomes an issue, a I E until it's, it starts messing with my bag, period, it's not worth my time. Also, if there's a problem and you haven't told me, it's a you problem. Mm -hmm. We don't read minds around here. I'm not Miss Cleo calling me now. If you got a problem with me, you tell me to my face. Point blank, period. Not Cleo. Okay? Because you're not, you're not going to hurt my feelings. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Okay? Because there's only two people in this world that I care about, and none of them are here. There. Period. Point blank, period. <laughs> Okay. Oh, man. If it if it does not affect my coin, does not affect my family, hell, if it doesn't affect my dog or this goddamn tree, I frankly don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care. You could literally message me and say, I am never coming back to your community because I didn't like the way you played that game. Bye. But you don't even got to do that. You don't, you don't need to announce yeah. your departure. You don't need Just to go. do anything like that. Because I, I promise boof. you, if I see it, I'm that person. Even if I if I see a subtweet, if I see those things, I am the person that all I'm going to do is I'm just going to like it. That's it. <laughs> I'm simply just going to like it. So you know I saw it. And I will never, ever, ever give it any other time of the day. Because you're going to live. Uh, you're, you, I am going to live in your hand rent free in the penthouse okay. running tracks on that treadmill. And I'm not thinking about you one time. Because you could do everything correctly. You could be the most mature person on this planet and you will still be the villain in the story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Someone's going to find some sort of way that Chris did this or Lainey handled it like this instead of like this mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. I, man, I, and, and this is where it all comes back to. Like, yo, I literally just want to play some video games and make a great community. And I'm not here for all this extracurricular, extracurricular bullshit mm -hmm. that, comes, that comes through. Um, period <laughs> um, so I hope that answers the question <laughs> yeah uh, we have one from Black Goddess again what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you just started the journey of content creation get a fucking ethernet cord stream teams aren't everything that too and just get to be <laughs> very particular about if you are aligning with your stream if you are aligning with the stream team to um really know really do the research on the team for one and know how it's going to help you and how it could hinder you 
mm -hmm. at the same time um because a lot of times when you build brands sometimes even if it's not just stream team but even people sometimes when you're just too close to a situation even if you did nothing you still get burned just because you're close to the fire and that's why i simply say always be aware but know that you don't have to be on teams if you don't want to but there are mm -hmm. many teams out there and this is why i said not every team there are many teams like sisters of the fog like noir like amazing teams that do amazing things for many creators mm -hmm. so take away the grain of salt of course um, speaking like of you that said, to uh get an ethan accord <laughs> i i've had sisters in tears sharing about how sisters of the fog has been such a safe place for them Mm -hmm. and um, a safe space for them and I I am eternally grateful especially as somebody who's on staff there that that we can provide that safe space and it's beautiful yeah and then they can tell you too if there's ever a problem just tell just tell me tell me that there's an mm -hmm. issue we will we will solve it we'll figure it out not that there has been an issue but if something were to ever come up let us know and it, yeah, let, like let shit doesn't have to be a twit longer. And that's not like, they, I feel like sometimes, <laughs> and this isn't something related to stream teams because I don't want to get misconstrued and think that I'm speaking on certain situations or anything mm -hmm. like that. But I feel like sometimes just in Twitch spaces, that is like the go to way of just like solving things when a lot of things sometimes could be solved in a conversation mm -hmm. with the right people is, mm -hmm. is the thing. And this is, again, this is not to, I'm not speaking on any situation in specific. I'm speaking of a certain behavior that I've personally just seen over the mm -hmm. past year that I've been streaming and whatnot. And then it's like, and then problems just get larger and larger. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like, like Lainey said earlier, if I ever do something my community knows, like you can message me, you can tell me, but also if my community ever does something, I'm not, I might not say it in chat because I don't want to put anybody on blast depending on what it is, but you damn well better believe you're getting a, you're getting a message from me in five business days or less. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh -uh, I'm not walking around in my community feeling uncomfortable when you walk into chat. Okay. Yeah, no. Bye. In my stream, on the internet that I pay for, in my house. <laughs> on Beyonce's internet? on Beyonce's internet <laughs> there's no way there's no way um let me see another thing I would say is that you don't have to align yourself with every single streamer you mm -hmm. don't have to play games with people just because they also stream and then mm -hmm. just because you network or play games with other creators does not mean that you will benefit in any way and exactly. I say, I say that uh, like Especially games you don't like. Y'all not getting me in no Among Us lobbies. <laughs> I feel like that would be such good chaos. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all not getting me in Among Us. It gives me so much anxiety. So I'm like, I I felt bad because I've been asked to be in so many and I've said no. But I'm like, it's just not a game I want to play. Mm-hmm. That's fair. <laughs> um... Oh, I, I like I like the sentence in this one. While we're all trying to dodge burnout and COVID like Neo dodges in the Matrix, how oh, has listen. the pandemic changed your attitude towards streaming, especially since some may not work at home or in the stream room more often? Um, I say especially because my office is where I do all of my shit. Um, when I on days like today where I do work from home, I have to space it out. I have mm -hmm. to space it out, or I will lose my mind. And I also want to acknowledge Tanny. Thank you so much for the raid. Tanny um, actually just had a panel um, called Into the Soul where they talked about how we can um, have better representation of everyone, more inclusion oh. and diversity in DVD without it being such a hateful environment. Um, yeah. And I caught the first hour of that, and you all did amazing. You did. She hosted that with uh, Jane Romero. So you guys did absolutely amazing. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for giving the love to us. We appreciate that. Um, we're in the, we're just talking about content uh, creation right now. Um, and the question is, how do we dodge like, you know, burnout? out? How's the pandemic change our attitude towards streaming? I did notice, um, I think it was a, I think it's more so a blessing than anything else that the pandemic mm -hmm. resulted in a lot more streamers um, mm -hmm. coming like into the fray. And um, like me. Yeah. Like you, like if the pandemic yeah. never happened, I would probably wouldn't have met you yeah truly that's and that's what i think about i'm like but like i think about it like holy crap like y'all were walking on the same earth the same ass earth mm -hmm. and i would have never known 
had all the amazing people that I have today. So I definitely think um, full transparency. I live in a studio apartment because before the pandemic, I was never home. I was always at my workplace. I was always at mm. work. And when I would come home, when I moved to where I live now, I was like, I just need a place to sleep. So like we just have the bare minimum and whatnot. So this is basically my entire apartment. I don't decorate it much because I want to move. So I'm like, I don't want to put a bunch of stuff up and then I got to take, take it down. down. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm always in that, like, I'm going to move. Maybe I'm going to move like wishy-washy place because um, mm. my rent is 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 dirt cheap so like i'm like I, I i don't care um but i think the pandemic kind of changed it because in the beginning like the first lockdown and things like that i, I think back and i didn't stream then so i was like what the fuck was i doing <laughs> what the hell was i doing with all this time i was just sitting up here doing absolutely nothing but in that time i started playing video games like that was when i played red dead redemption 2 for the first time and i played star wars jedi fallen order for the for the first time and those like super strong games that really i think reignited that that fire in me because um for a number of years i was just so like focused on work and just building mm. my career and doing all those things but then when the pandemic happened i kind of was like so what's the point of this what am i what am i doing for myself and when i started going to therapy back in 2019 again that was one of my main things like well what do you want for yourself in your life christopher and oh my god not me calling myself my full name i never do that but like what do you want but like what did i want for myself in my life and i think that was the original point of like where things started is asking mm. myself those questions what i want to do because i'd always wanted to stream but then i was like oh maybe maybe not for me um but I think the pandemic has made it a lot more accessible because this is definitely my escape because my job can be very stressful. Mm -hmm. um, and I also live in a city where I know maybe a handful of people. I don't speak the language that's most prominent here, which is French. Um, so it can be very lonely and very isolating. And I really just had some time. I really had a moment in like late 2020 when I was just kind of like, I don't know anybody here. I miss mm -hmm. Toronto. I miss friends. I miss being able to just do what i wanted there's this pandemic and there's no vaccines and stuff and i really was just like let's just get on this website and see if we can just meet some new people i that was basically my first expectation i just want to make some new friends because i don't i don't know anybody but because of the pandemic the internet made everything so accessible like everything right. was tiktok and internet and twitter and, and stuff so i was just kind of like you know what i'm watching a lot of twitch why didn't i try doing it because i want to make friends and some of my best friends mm -hmm. now um i met on twitch just from hanging out in their streams and uh sent a raid over to them and then um we eventually became like closer and played games and now we talk literally every single day mm -hmm. i what was the question of <laughs> <laughs> well, the, que the question was, how has the pandemic changed your attitude towards streaming? I think mine is the same, um, especially since now, since some may now work at home or in a stream room more often. Mm -hmm. I think if that is the case and you kind of are like me, where like mm -hmm. you work here, you stream here and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I get to work in my office from Monday to, th to Thursday. So Friday is really the only day that it blends. But I remember when I was working from home, when we did, had the initial lockdown, I struggled mm -hmm. in the beginning um because it was just like this this computer was just here i was here his monitors were here and i just lived here like spent mm -hmm. 12 hours in a room um yeah. and you know i went a little bonkers and then <laughs> but then after we were able to go uh, back on site i was able to balance it out perfectly to the point where the past two weeks i was actually at home um because of the you know omarion yeah <laughs> so, omarion, so they, they uh, okay so they they sent us home for uh two weeks but those two weeks i was fine because I had, yeah. I knew how to balance my time. So I would say that, you know, if you're struggling with working from home um, and also streaming from the same area, I say every other hour, get up, drink water on your lunch mm -hmm. break. Make sure you get outside, um, especially if you live, yes. you know, not in the, you know, frigid area that I do. If you have nice weather, please get outside, sit on your porch, do something. Separate yourself from that room as mm -hmm. much as you can during your downtime exactly i try and do that like go for walks not so much anymore because i live in canada and it's winter um so i would like take walks around the block or even like when i would finish streams like i would have some streams like you know you have a stream that is just so good you're vibing people mm -hmm. are throwing throwing subs and all the things and it's like you have such a high where i literally would be like i just need to go and i would just leave my house because my apartment is just one room yeah and i would just go sit at the park and i would kind of always like decompress and just like listen mm -hmm. to a new album like while sitting at the park in the summer and kind of just like just vibe out and really Hi, just Danny. kind of like be with myself and just mm -hmm. be, be be down 
and 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 stuff. Um, I'm sorry for the stutters. Um, no, you're good. But like, yeah, you really yes, do need is. to have those that time for yourself to give your time back. Is that is that is that Tanny? Is that it Tanny? Is the Tanny. Dead by Daylight, the Dead by Daylight <laughs> icon, the one I'm trying to be like when it comes to looping these killers, <laughs> but they keep catching me at the corners. Tanny the is one merciless. I'm trying to imitate, merciless. <laughs> um, but truly, um, I'm you really do need to have that that separation um and know when because like you i work at this desk i i do everything here um mm -hmm. but that's where it's like the balance when you especially when you have a full-time job too because with my job i could always work from home even before the pandemic we could work from home i never liked to um mm -hmm. but then i became someone who had to work from home all the time as opposed to going to the office because while i can go to our office still i don't know if it's open it's just far from where i live so i'm like mm. 30 minutes to get to the office on the metro versus just staying home and working um it really i really have to be more strict with my time and understanding that like when work was over like i needed to have much stricter work-life balance rules yeah. um to then be able to thrive and do everything else um when it comes to stream and things so stream has become my escape and i just don't treat it like a job it's it's my mm -hmm. hobby it's something that i just genuinely love doing and keeping that so pure has really been remarkable because i can honestly say that there's privilege in that in that my job yeah. covers all my living expenses and more so like I, twitch has never been something that like ever sorry my neighbors are cussing each other off um, <laughs> um twitch never became something that came down to like make or break on like my income or anything like that so i think mm -hmm. not having to think about that also helped make it a little bit easier but like it definitely has some times where it's stressful where i feel like um i have no time to myself in times mm. um but then i'm like i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to cancel the stream because i can only stream two times a week because i have a full-time job because with mm -hmm. my boundaries i don't stream after work on a day if i'm working even when mm -hmm. i can there needs to be a reason so sometimes i will if there's like a special event like a playstation event or things that i want to watch with the community maybe i'll do that but then that's where it's like you got to get a little bit more creative and know that your content doesn't just end with the stream your content can exist in so much more other places so on days i'm not streaming that's where we'll do shit like tiktok that's where we'll do stuff mm -hmm. like twitter that's where youtube videos and stuff in the future will go up because you really have to um see how to make things work for mm -hmm. you while still not overextending yourself because on days where i go to work sometimes it's stressful sometimes oh, i'm using yeah. my brain all day long mm -hmm. so so truly yeah. um you really got to find that balance especially in this pandemic world where everything feels all doom and gloom mm -hmm. stop using hashtags in your fucking twitter posts i ain't going i'm not even gonna say this one no more i'm not even saying it anymore, <laughs> do you? again if you like it i love it <laughs> but but it's not even stop using hashtags in your post stop using hashtags incorrectly yes that is it stop using yes. hashtags incorrectly adding 50 hashtags to one tweet is not using it correctly and all it's going to do is look like spam and i guarantee you everybody is going to keep scrolling and the actual system because i was having this conversation with someone where i'm like when we really think about computers and things like that they can only really they're smart yes but they can only really work with information we give them in certain mm -hmm. ways so it's like a, a, a tweet or like a, a a search engine can only do things based on what we put so if you put a bunch of generic things in it's going to try to be doing a million things at once and nine out of ten times it's going to literally do nothing Mm -hmm. please do not use small streamers all those things because all that's going to happen is you get the likes and whatnot but if you look they're all bot accounts bots are Yikes. bots are bots bots aren't going to bots are not going to engage with your content beyond that one like they're not going to go follow you anywhere else like it doesn't make sense to to use those and stop calling yourself a small streamer whether you have 100 followers you're still a creator and you still have valuable mm -hmm. impact that you can make there are people who have maybe 300 people that follow them on pinterest that can get a ten thousand dollar sponsorship because they can prove the impact that those 300 people will do mm -hmm. so stop calling yourself small you might think that you're small or anything like that but mm -hmm. your impact is vastly wide i may think that i sometimes i thought that i was small but i was like chris you were on the front page of twitch and raised a thousand dollars in less than mm -hmm. an hour you are not small yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so 
truly think about the words and it's so funny because i talked about this the other day i was like i tweeted and i was like one day we're gonna have a conversation about the words that people use and associate with themselves and their brand and how it looks to other people because something mm -hmm. i see on twitch all the time is people calling themselves oh mediocre gamer or things like that but then it's mm -hmm. like when you call yourself that you make it okay for other people to call you that yeah and, you make it and treat normal for way. other people to, to to see it like that but then when you want to work with other like brands they're like well if you're just telling yourself like you're a mediocre gamer why are you why why should our brand align with you so that's where it's like mm -hmm. think about the words that you use to associate to yourself to things and also words that other people give because sometimes people will be like chris's community is cozy and i was like i never said that <laughs> i never said that i have never used that word to describe my community ever or mm -hmm. people will be like it's chaotic i have never used that word ever never never i say my community mm -hmm. is chill sometimes yeah. we, sometimes we do the most but all in all think like it really it really does matter because it is sometimes for me i can truly say when i see certain words for that it's that decision of me of clicking follow and not clicking follow and that's all it takes yeah that's true yeah especially just the description you give yourself and mm -hmm. i think a lot of people forget that when you enter into kind of this field you are a brand and mm -hmm. who you associate with is also your brand and not saying that you should not get to know people or that you should get to know everybody but you should always be very picky and who you have in your immediate circle that's not just in content creation that's just in general um everybody is not your friend everybody is not your friend the therapist sometimes people can be acquaintances and that's fine and that's a-okay sometimes you just have a person a networking relationship with somebody and that's fine exactly you don't have to get closer to people chris and i don't talk every day mm -hmm. we don't talk but every day but i know if something's going on in the timeline and i message laney i'm just like laney you see this <laughs> i sure i sure do <laughs> we don't talk every day and that's the thing yeah. and I, like one thing i can truly say is the internet is very weird because i remember i've had people dm me about drama that had nothing to do with me but they're like but like i see that you follow this person so like i'm letting you know i'm reaching out to you and i'm just kind of like yikes. i follow a streamer as a streamer yike and things like that like that's not uncommon for me to follow someone that also like works in the same space that yeah. i also work on things and th it's 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 just it can get weird it can get very odd and stuff like that so like mm -hmm. I don't know where I was going with this story, but what were we just talking about? My brain is spent. <laughs> um, like, but like for example, like just, doesn't no, mean you're friends with that person. Exactly. Just because you follow Like them. a follow, in the same way of me saying like, a follow isn't a cosign. A follow is just, hey, this person's a creator that's really cool and I like their mm -hmm. content. But like, just because I follow in the same way, like just because you follow Beyonce doesn't mean... That Discord cutting you out. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I for, I froze for a second. I think my internet had a hiccup, but I was like, just because you follow like a celebrity on the internet doesn't mean you know them. Yeah. They're literally, it's when you're seeing parts of people's lives that they want you to see exactly T. And an unfollow is just as quick as a follow. Just as quick. And many people will unfollow you at the drop of a pin if you just don't say good morning to them the right way. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. They couldn't handle all the Beyonce. Listen, Beyonce was on her internet. She's like, right, you're talking about me too much. Mm -hmm. And then also never assume that you can just navigate people's areas how you want to. Like, for example, I um, I often, I'm always looking for more new, new black DVD streamers, always. And whenever mm -hmm. I go into somebody's chat and they have like an open lobby or something like that, or they're doing kill your friends. And I'll say like, I mean, I, I can join, but only if you're comfortable with me joining, because I've only been there for like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they will, and they'll say, oh yeah, no, totally. You can jump in too. Um, another, another thing to lock your fucking discord. Or at least have rules where people any can. Any of your spaces. Any of them. Because no one needs to have all that access to you at any time. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nobody on this earth needs to be able to just pick up and send you a DM that's going to go to your inbox and talk all kinds mm -hmm. of mess about anything. Nope. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I do often when I join a new Discord, unless I am very knowledgeable or very familiar with somebody, I definitely like turn off that option in privacy settings where like the people can DM me from this server. Nope. Mm -hmm. Turn it off. Mm-hmm. 
No, thank no, you. Because it's it's odd. It's odd. And sometimes mm-hmm. too, especially as someone who has Hi, friends who have all age communities, as someone with the 18 plus community, mm-hmm. there's reasons why my communities are 18 plus. One, because mm-hmm. I talk a lot of shit. And two, because I know the internet is not safe. The internet is not a safe place. And my community used to be like, I was like 18 plus, who needs that? But then as I started learning more, I was like, oh, no, 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 oh, Y'all yeah. not just about to run up in here. Mm-hmm. Y'all not just about to run up in here. Because while we keep things safe and whatnot, I can't trust what's going on. Mm-hmm. beyond things and me and the mods keep things super 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 tight Hi, friends. Um, but it's it's just it's just it's just a mess it is a mess it's, and it's, it's a mess out there so and if you're a minor and you are putting yourself into 18 plus spaces there's a reason why we do not want you in those spaces okay and it's not and it is for like your you. safety right it's for your safety you have to that- remember that but also, Lainey, like, you're turning 30. I'm 26. Mm-hmm. We yeah. don't have anything in common. We're not talking about the same things, realistically. Mm-hmm. Um, like, sometimes I'm here talking about student loans and whatnot, and we simply are just in different places in life, mm-hmm. and that is okay. And yeah. that is okay. That's it. Me and most of my friends are all around the same ages, and we talk about the mm-hmm. same things. Just like when I was a teenager, me and most of my friends talk about the same things in our teenage years and things like that and it Mm -hmm. just the internet can be wild the internet can be a number of things and i listen just as a black creator i already got a million things that i really got to focus on of people just not wanting to play dbd because i'm black and things like that so people think you're fucking burlesque don't start don't start don't you start with that because literally and even things like that like and it's so funny and it's it's not even funny but it's things like that that kind of like it's annoying on a level but then it also hurts in a sense yeah. because not that it hurts me that i'm being called someone else but it's like there's this thing routinely where it's like i feel like so many black creators only meet other black creators through one point of trauma um mm-hmm. or like things happening or like anti-blackness on twitch or anything like that or me being like microaggressed to another com- creator mm-hmm. like i can't find out about people that are black and creators from like just naturally finding their content like that's how i met so many creators during the hate raids and whatnot and it's like Mm. this sucks that like we're being highlighted and i'm learning about so many black creators because of the experiences that they're having um so i think that's where it gets a little bit more annoying because i had no idea who that creator was and granted he's very big and i'm sure Mm -hmm. he's an amazing creator but it's like one if you think we look alike i'm gonna need you to go get that prescription checked but two (laughs) it's like why like i never see this happen to any to any white creators i never see this happen to any Mm -hmm. other creators but then it's like if i'm being more calm i'm trying to be like blizz bear if i'm doing this and it's like why can you not just understand black creators are just black creators that are exactly multiple people when it's like it's very annoying and it's like in some of these creators i'm like i literally know these people Mm -hmm. What, what are you trying to do here um so it's super (sighs) it's 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 shitty it's rough and also not all of us are created equal we all have different beliefs we all Mm -hmm. think differently from one another and so it's important Mm -hmm. to understand that just because you approach one black creator one way does not mean it's going to be a pleasant or different experience from whatever everybody handles their streams differently and so it's important to understand that just because two people are friends with each other or play games with each other doesn't mean they operate in their communities the same way exactly um, and um like for example you can have mutual viewers right but people go to mm-hmm. people for different reasons exactly. and more importantly um you don't own your viewers make that very clear you do not own your Sneak viewers these, these are people dedicating their free time to hang out with you, hang out with your community, spend time because that's where they feel safe. And that's more of a compliment than anything else. You do not own people. So if somebody disappears for two weeks, unless they're like your mod, they don't really owe you an explanation as to where they've been. Or if they are your mod. What they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mods are busy. Mods are busy. Some of my mods come around sometimes. Some of my mods come around more often. That's another one too. But people are busy. That's another one too. People are busy. If also, you have expectations, <laughs> mm-hmm. if you have expectations for your moderators, you need to set those clearly. Clearly. Because mm-hmm. moderation, while it is a free job, it is still something that you need exactly. as a content creator. Exactly. You can't you can't tab it's out your job. game all the time. Mm-hmm. It's not their job to 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 do. Yeah. Um to like it's it's not their job to define 
what the requirements for them being a moderator exactly. is is mm -hmm. the thing. Um, so. Mm hmm. Some there are some streamers that like you have to be there at every stream that I do. Yeah, and I, I'm and, not that person. I'm right, literally same. not. But, but I it's also like, know that like listen, I can say something and I know Nikki's probably got that tab open even if Nikki is half asleep. <laughs> she's probably going to do the shout out in her sleep. I know. <laughs> fastest mod, fastest mod mm -hmm. on Twitch. I'm I guarantee it. I guarantee it. <laughs> I love that. Um but more importantly, just have fun on either side, whether you're a viewer or you are a content creator. Have fun, okay? And you can have fun safely, within boundaries, and at your own Don't pace. Don't mess with people. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to look at opportunities that other people get. It's very easy to look at the growth that someone has. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I, I, I like to always say, and again, hi, therapist, experiencing negative emotions is a, is a normal thing. Not you putting on the therapist voice. <laughs> Exper uh, experiencing negative emotions is a normal thing. You are not going to be happy 24 seven. You are not going to be nice 24 fucking seven. So it's important to understand that when those moments of sadness come up, that anger come up, jealousy comes up, that you know how to manage that or you're able to check mm -hmm. that for yourself. Because you can look at somebody and say, I want those exact opportunities they have. I want the ex experiences they had. And da, da, da. You don't know what that person did to get you where they are. You don't Listen, know who they on. know. Take your time, Pastor. Come on. Okay. Come on. So it's important for you to just focus on yourself. Okay. If you need to, reach out to brands yourself. Mm -hmm. Pitch yourself. Do you uh, have any way? Do you know how to price yourself? Talk to other content creators and just say, hey, like, I average this. What do you think my rate should be? And a lot of people will say, well, what do you think your rate should be? And my, bi my biggest, my biggest recommendation, and I say this with all the love. I'm looking dead in the camera. I say this with all the love I can muster to you. Please stop going into full-time content creation when you do not have a safety net. I'm going to repeat that. Please stop going into full-time content creation when you do not have a safety net. Now, what do I mean by safety net? If you live with your partner and you have you go from a two-person income to a one-person income, is there still an income, a consistent income coming in? Do you live with your parents? Is it okay that you live with your parents? Are they fine? Do they have an expectation of rent for you to pay? You need to figure all of that out before you say, I'm going to quit my job and do this full time you have to understand that any gaps in employment history you are going to have to explain unless you are immunocompromised at this mm -hmm. very moment and it's hard for you to get a job because you cannot please for the love of god either stack your unemployment checks or get some form of income the world does not stop because you have a dream the bills do not stop because you have a dream. Oh, they come. Oh, they come in. You, you still need to, especially, especially when we're talking to children are involved and pets are involved. You need to make exactly. sure that you have your income together. You have to. Exactly. Exactly. And like Frisk said in chat, like create stable or have multiple yes. sources. But also with what Crispy said too, like, know that full-time content creation doesn't have to be for every for mm -hmm. anybody at this point in my life i don't want to be a full-time content creator because like you mm -hmm. said listen that student loan that student loan okay paid, <laughs> it needs to get paid okay that, that degree these things need to get paid so right mm -hmm. now i don't want to put that stress on myself i don't want to yeah. do any of those things because i'm like in my personal life i'm trying to grind out i'm trying to hustle and i want streaming to truly be my fun and happy space like i mm -hmm. generally love playing video games and whatnot but it's like but if it was to ever become a point to where it could be something full-time i know that i'm a very calculated person and like everything needs to make sense i i yes listen y'all i literally cannot even be in the grocery store and make an impulse purchase i can't do that with my career no I, I cannot do that with my career. If I if I'm in the grocery store and listen, this Fresca wasn't on the list. That Fresca is not coming home with me. It is staying okay. in that store. Um, 
because we also don't really, I don't think Fresco's normal here, so that's just probably like $9. Um, but truly, like, understand that it's okay to take your time and make plans and it's great because we see people going full-time every mm -hmm. single day but like laney said you don't know how long they've been doing this you don't know yep. what they've done you don't know what they're willing to do and you just aren't in their shoes they're not you mm -hmm. you're not there yet but you can be there but my most my most important thing that i always ask people is are you doing the same work are you working are you mm -hmm. doing more work than they're doing because that yeah. that's the thing it sounds great to go full-time and it would not but most of the full-time creators that i know work hard they post mm -hmm. content everywhere they do things and their communities grow because they are working so hard and they barely take time off exactly. many creators who work full-time say i haven't taken time off just for me for like mm -hmm. three four years are you yeah. really willing to put all of that in to put that work in for wherever you want to get in and most times people are like i can't even really post on tiktok consistently and things like that but then it's like but mm -hmm. this is this is where it's like you need to think on things harder these aren't snap decisions that you make because this is your life and your livelihood and you can do amazing things as a creator mm -hmm. but like this is where you really do need to strap in and know and this is exactly why i said take that first year and do things for yourself and build your community to know that this is really what you want to do because when it comes to branding like i was saying now like branding is only something that i really started thinking about really building this year because i'm like now in my second year i know the community i know myself i know all these things so much more so now i'm gonna really put some money into that um so it's 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 tough and exactly frisk listen consecration mm -hmm. can be so lonely yeah. it can be like it's so weird because it's like you know so many people and you could have fifty thousand followers but it can still feel so lonely because you spend so much time mm -hmm. doing things on your own if you're not streaming then you're editing content on your own or i'm editing for other people and things like that mm -hmm. so it's like you really need to and making sure you have a safety net isn't just money but having the right people around you having yep. friends that you know that you can just play games with that you can reach mm -hmm. out to and be like hey you know what it's been a day can we just play some dead by daylight together let's let's jump mm -hmm. into the fog let's have some fun let's just shit around nobody's streaming let's just take let's just mm -hmm. let's just relax and enjoy some time together like having those safety nets to know that you can have people around you that will not only do that but people that will hold you accountable Mm -hmm. like you need to set yourself up in that sense but don't don't depend on people but truly know um that it's not easy it's not easy if no. it was easy everybody would be on ninja's level if it was Period. easy but no but not everybody is if it was easy everybody would would be would be at the top but that's not mm -hmm. how it works you truly mm -hmm. do have to there's a lot of work that has to be done and even like when people are like chris you're going so quickly and i'm like yeah because i work tirelessly when yeah. I'm not doing this, if I have an idea and I'm in bed and it could be 4 a.m., I get out of my bed and I'll edit it because I'm one of those people when something's in my brain, I just need to physically mm -hmm. do it. Um, so that's what it is. Like, are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to work as hard as I am? Mm -hmm. Like, if, if, if you're not, like, that's okay. But then you can't complain when it's like, my things aren't growing as much and whatnot but then it's like mm -hmm. there's just other creators who are discovering more ground there are other creators mm -hmm. who are posting their content and doing different things like that it's not that people within reason don't want to go to your streams but then it's like you have to mm -hmm. you have to think of things as more than just the streamer you have to also think of the viewer you have to think yeah. of how people will find your content and how people will con will um, consume your content on different platforms mm -hmm. and different stuff like that like I always tell people and I'm like maybe because I'm a content producer but literally every second of mine that's in a TikTok has to be there for a reason if I'm watching it and there's one second that might be too long that I don't think it's going to really contribute to the story it is immediately removed because I'm like you have to think about the viewer side especially as mm -hmm. me I don't really watch TikToks other than like my friends and stuff like that mm -hmm. like you really do have to do that research and keep up to date and do and always be learning about just mm -hmm. the space because you can't rely on just spaces like this or if it's x mirrors x mirror spaces and things like that to learn everything about the industry they're mm -hmm. great starting points to learn more from people who are doing it but like you really have to empower yourself to learn mm -hmm. so much more about content creation because it's not going to look the same for everybody it really isn't it's not um wolf put a great point here that if you do become a full-time content creator member, you have to explain what you mean by self-employed. So turn Twitch streamer into online creator on multiple platforms with experience in community management and online community, mm -hmm. uh, online community management. Um, realistic, realistic expectations for yourself and your own mental health is vital in streaming. Yes. Do yes. the workman in a yes. way you care for you. Yes. Please do not overstress yourself. Stream is not going anywhere. And mm -hmm. while 
the stress of content creation is like, okay, well, if I take a week off, like, you know, your numbers are going to fluctuate. You, you know, they're, they're going to, but that's in anything that you do. Anything exactly. is going to fluctuate, but they're going to fluctuate more if your mental health is not together and you're snapping on every single person that comes through your chat or you're snapping on anybody when you're playing an online game like Valorant or anything like that. It's going to come out in a different way. And exactly. if you're not having fun, chat's not having fun. Exactly. And they can tell when something's off, when things aren't you know as smooth and things like that your chat can kind of tell and the whole vibe mm -hmm. is off so sometimes it may seem like that week like when i took two weeks off at the end of the year nothing was wrong nothing happened to me on stream mm -hmm. i just had a long year last year yeah and i was like i just feel like i had one stream and i just didn't feel like myself everything with stream was fine like we were great mm -hmm. but i just didn't feel like the usual me so i was like you know we're just gonna take the rest of the year off and i'm gonna come back in 2022 and it was the best thing that i ever did because it's just like when things feel off they're off and it's better to just know mm -hmm. and call it. Um, and I know it's the fear of taking time off that like your numbers might dwindle or things like that. But like I took time off and my numbers doubled from what I was doing before. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's possible, but like it really sometimes can be the big reset for what you need mm -hmm. to just, to just walk into a new year, try new things and to just get a fresh take and mm -hmm. outlook on things because sometimes you have that or like when i don't feel like editing content and whatnot i don't force myself if i have exactly. no ideas i have no ideas mm -hmm. there's nothing you get that video no the day after i said it was gonna be <laughs> exactly if there's just no ideas there's nothing there's nothing Ugh. listen i'm just one man sometimes okay. you're sometimes you have a moment on stream that gets clipped and you're like oh this is gonna be so funny but once i put it in adobe i'm kind of like Mm -hmm. this was a great on stream moment but like now that i crop it down and stuff like it doesn't it doesn't hit the same like mm -hmm. will this will this do well and it's of course it's not about the numbers but for me it's about creating quality content that mm -hmm. will be understood so then it's like sometimes if i have doubts but i'm like i think i'm just being more picky and whatnot like i'll still post it but it's like if i just don't feel that love for something it it, mm -hmm. it it's not worth uh it's not worth the post but yeah but y'all are all amazing creators and i know that you're all gonna accomplish all of the goals that you literally have in mind Period. and and dance some and dance mm -hmm. some 2022 is that your black history month is coming up <laughs> um and it's i'm sure all the uh op opportunistic people are in emails <laughs> check check your business email if you are of the melanin because <laughs> they are coming they're coming very swiftly okay um but as long More as there's some checks attached and those okay. checks clear. Okay. Um, and make sure you're talking to each other too. Um, yes. If you are working with uh, different brands or different brands approach you, ask people you trust. Ask content creators, hey, have you heard about this brand before? Have you, do you know any, if anybody had a good or bad experience with this brand? Just so that you are aware of what you're putting yourself into. Um, do they mean what they say? Are they performative in their action? Um, or do they genuinely put their money and time behind mm -hmm. what they say they stand for? So it's important for you to, you know, you'll see people will reach out to you. You don't take everything that comes at you. Exactly. You don't. You, you don't have you to You don't. Do you can say no. I just realized you weren't being hosted. Don't don't proceed. No, 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 no. You had hosted before, but then my whole thing took a shit. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, yes. yeah, that's, that's right. That's what the it second was. Okay, so. Whew. Mm -hmm. whew. No, you're I all good. No, me. you were doing it before. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> no, you're good. All right. Okay. Um. But, um, and more importantly, take your time, okay? Uh, change can happen very slowly. Because I know a lot of people, they, what some people do, they'll get like a whole new everything. They'll change their username. They will rebrand and be like, where's everybody? Too quick. Take your time. Okay, slow. Like, like you said earlier in your stream today, you took time you slowly upgraded your microphone slowly upgraded your headset slowly did what mm -hmm. you had to do okay those things are not going nowhere they're not they're not going anywhere you gotta be, be okay. okay yeah oh my gosh look at that look at that holding the exact same brain cell you're gonna <laughs> okay. be okay if things don't happen as quickly as you want them to that's just a part of life and that's okay mm -hmm. it's fine is a okay. <laughs> oh, I feel like we had a really good conversation today. That was good. That was some good questions. Wow. Mm -hmm. What a day. Yes. Wow. Lainey, thank there... you for truly inviting me and of having course. me here. Oh my gosh. No problem. 
It's been fun introduce reintroducing yourself to everyone. You forgot to tell your no, not you forgot to tell your community. Oh no. Oh no. But yeah, um, thank you, Chris, for being my first guest. And I'm of so, course, I'm so, so excited. For uh, I feel I feel like it's gonna be blessed now because of the technical issue. I feel like I feel like from now on, these streams are gonna be blessed. Exactly. Um, <laughs> now they're gonna be now they're gonna be good because now you know. <laughs> exactly. We were doing so well that my USB ports had stopped. Please stop. Exactly. Actively. Um, you feel refreshed and enlightened. I was mostly lurking, but thank you both everyone for advice. It's a discussion. Yeah, I'm good. And um, this is something I'm gonna do monthly. So who knows? Chris may be back in a few months. You never know. Oh, you maybe, know. maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, right. You never know. Maybe. Um, but no, truly, thank you for having yeah. me. I, I This okay. podcast is going to help so many people, and the conversation is so needed. And I'm just very mm -hmm. glad that, you know, we're seeing two Black creators coming together to have conversations like this that are just about content and making sure and helping mm -hmm. people who may just need that little push because i know there's people in here who are thinking about streaming that might mm -hmm. not want to and looking and are, are constantly waiting for that sign to do start it. streaming do it you, you better get your ass on that computer and download obs do right it. now not the not the slobs obs just the regular <laughs> obs you better download it and start putting those scenes together Period. because we gonna get you right this year oh um real quick too if you're looking for music okay Mm -hmm. I highly recommend Lo-Fi Girl. I know it's very safe if you want to do music. But also, I use Epidemic Sound. So I pay a monthly thing. Okay? And I can use music that has words in it. Oh, All that's right? how you do it. Mm-hmm. So oh. the music the music that y'all were jamming to in the beginning, I can play. I'm not going to get... they have good music. Mm -hmm. I'm know. not going to get strike for that. I was always like, how are you not getting doxxed up in here? Yep. So I'm, I don't get DMCA because I use um, Epidemic Sound, so I pay like DMCA bucks a not doxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's actually not bad. That's actually not yeah. bad. Yeah. No, not bad at all. I think I might pay the the yearly one there. soon. Oh, um, but no, not yeah, bad honestly, at all. Save the money. Save the mm -hmm. money. Um, but uh, yeah, I highly recommend that if you're looking, you know, if you're tired of lo-fi and you look for some mouse, highly recommend yeah. that. If you were jamming I've been out. Switching it up with some uh, like punk rock lately. <laughs> Ooh. I have. I've been switching it up that. with a royalty-free playlist with some rock music that I learned Period. about from Vine. And Vine, they're they're a great streamer. So I was like, Love I trust that. you. <laughs> let's see. Let's see who who sends it to. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. What we're looking for. Try and look for somebody. Looking for somebody. All right. Let's see. Chad, are you cool with a DVD stream? Are we cool with a DVD I'm cool. stream? I'm cool because that's probably what I was gonna go start watching after this. Oh hell yeah. Because I need my I need my I need <laughs> she my said, of course. every day. <laughs> every day. I need to watch me some DVD. I need to see some killers being looped a little bit, a little bit. All right. And we're gonna we're gonna rate a black creator because we need to know more black creators. Point blank in the period. Period. Uh, period. I know I'm not the big no 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 Mackenzie, you were part of the demographic. This is for viewers as well. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. good for you all to know this information too. Okay. We're just two black creators. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I meant. Two. We're just two. All right. Just so here's us. what we're gonna do. We're going to be rating Maz of the Void, who is just started. Her stream. Ooh, let's go. Okay. And Moss is a sister of the fog and power noir. So double verified. Alright? So if you are not a sub in my channel, A okay. Use one with the hearts. If you are a sub, please use one with the penguins. Okay? And I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna be playing some Final Fantasy. I'm gonna finish it. We're finishing it. Are you? Yes. Are you? Yes. <laughs> you know what? To spite you, I'm gonna finish it now. Honestly, it's despite you. But again, Lainey, thank you so much for having me. This was of an, an honor and a blessing. You are. It was. It was. You're very welcome. It was very. It was a blessing to have you here. This went exactly how I thought it would, minus the technical issue. This went exactly how I thought. It would. I'm happy. Bye, I'm excited. Lainey. I can't wait for the next episode. Yes. Good night, next everybody. month. Good night, y'all.
Yeah, mask above your nose. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye.